food stands by. When Oliver came home again, the trucks sang rude songs. They were led by Scruffy, a private owner wagon. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When he orders us about with the greatest folly, we just push him down the well, pop goes old Ollie. The engines bumped them. Shut up, they ordered. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the trucks began again. At last they gave it up. We're sorry, Oliver, they said. It's really my fault, he answered sadly. I'm worried, Mr. Douglas, said Tone next morning. This nasty spirit of disrespect for engines, where's it going to end? Dear Knowles, said Douglas gloomily, it must be stopped before it gets worse. I believe Mr. Oliver can do it. Maybe so, but how? I've a plan, Mr. Douglas. May I stay here today and help him? We are both great western and must stand together. Would you ask him before you go to favour me with a word? I'll take you to him, but he's awful small for the work you have in mind. No, Doc, Toad's right. Oh, this terrible's my fault, and I must put it right. I mean no disrespect, you understand. Of course not, Toad. Anyway, driver says the same. He's arranged it with the station master. Very well, Oliver, but I must hurry. My passengers will be waiting. Don't forget Stepney's tip about sand. Lay it on the rails as you back down, and roll it firm with your wheels. You get a splendid grip that way. Good luck. We'll three be there to cheer you on while you give those trucks a lesson. So long, smiled Oliver bravely, but he felt dreadfully nervous inside. I expect, Mr. Oliver, you want me on the middle road, as a stop block like. Er, uh, yes, please. Oliver marshalled the worst trucks, two by two in front of Toad. This way. Mr. Oliver takes longer, but they can't give trouble, and if you leave that scruffy till last, you'll have him right behind you. Then you can bump him if he starts his nonsense. The duck arrived to find them ready and waiting. Three cheers for Oliver and Toad, he called. Alice and Maribel responded with a will, and so wonderingly did the passengers. Hold back, whispered Scruffy. The trucks giggled as they passed the word. Oliver dug his wheels into the sand and gave a mighty heave. Whoa! groaned Scruffy. His couplings tightened. He was stretched between Oliver and the trucks. I don't like this. Go it, yelled Duck. Well done, boy, well done. Oh, 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 Well, Scruffy, but no one bothered about him. Ow, I'm coming apart. There came a rendering, splintering crash. Oliver shot forward suddenly. Scruffy's front end bumped behind his bunker, while Scruffy's load spread itself over the truck. Well, Oliver, so you don't know your own strength, is that it? N n no, sir said Oliver, nervously. The fat controller inspected the remains. As I thought, he remarked. Rotten wood, rusty frames, unserviceable before it came. He winked at Oliver and whispered, Don't tell the trucks that. Add for discipline. He strode away, chuckling. Nowadays, Oliver only takes trucks when the other engines are busy. But they always behave well. Take care with Mr. Oliver, they warn each other. He's strong, he is. You play tricks on him, and he'll likely pull you in half.